Good morning. I'm honored to be here. I am Kirsten Rymsgaard Clausen. I'm a scholar of religious history and I come from Sweden. And together with my good friend, archaeologist Matalina Bejstedt, we have searched, been searching for old Scandinavian mother culture okay. before 500 common era. Oh. And to do so, we have used a multidiscipline approach and try to open our eyes to a universal perspective, not national. Mm. And therefore, you may find that the old Scandinavian matriarchal culture is quite, uh, have many, uh, it's a sister, it's a sister to the pre-Celtic culture. So in school, we learned that the Viking, the patriarchal Viking religion was our first religion in Scandinavia. But this religion didn't come about before the Roman Empire was on decline, okay. 450. We have no old scriptures like you have. Our oldest scriptures is from 13th century. And it was about the Viking religion. And this, this uh, records were written on Iceland. It's not even on the map. It's far away out in the Atlantic Ocean. Iceland had no old cultures. It was settled first by Vikings. But the old matriarchal culture in Scandinavia, it had no kings, no organized military, no stratification of society. It was peaceful and it was an equal um, society where wise old women were guarding. Mm. And we can follow them in archaeology back to 1100 BCE. Their domain was uh, uh, strongholds, the borgs, we call them borg. This young woman is found, her grave was found, uh, it was stated 1100 BC, and probably she was a shaman, queen, young dancer, something. So today we will look at the Borgs. They were situated beautiful by waterways. Very high. And what you find today are walls. To the Borgs, there was a winding snake road, procession road. And in the middle, you found a big center stone. For a long time, old archaeologists thought that these places were military forts. There are more than 1,000 borgs in Sweden. And when you excavate, not many has exca been excavated, but when you excavate, you only find pearls, and combs, you find weaving tools and spinning and ceramics. You only find women things. What you also find are signs of big fires for hundreds of years. There are deep, deep layers of coal. And we believe that they were celebrating the eight seasons of the years. And we believe this because people still do that today. They go they, to the mountain and celebrate the transitions. The fires were high on top of mountains and they built a system so you could see from one fire to the other. It was a welcoming fire. And the, these mountains with fires, they are all called Sun Mountain, Light Mountain, things like that. Other names they have is, for instance, Hell or Hell, the Universal Mother. Also, we find that some of these um, fire mountains have been glazed like ceramics. You know, you can glaze ceramics in an oven by 1200 degrees, but you cannot do this in open air. Yeah, it's a mystery. Yeah, it's a I mystery. Mm -hmm. 
more than 1,000 bogs in Sweden. Here is some bogs south of Stockholm. The leader, the eldest leader of the bog was the Oma. And her office was part of a succession order. And we know that because it's said that she was always wearing a mask of the owl. Nobody ever saw her face. Another thing that testifies this is a big area of boat graves. For 600 years, women, rich women, were buried here um, in circles. One woman for each generation. The circle of wise old women and shamans at the box were the old Guma yeah. and Kuna. Yeah. They were gardening, guarding the wells. And symbolically, that means they were guarding the wells, the source of sacred knowledge. And their professions were shamans, healers, teachers, musicians, storytellers, oh. traders and travelers, midwives, they knew plant medicine, okay. mathematics and astrology. And they figured that in cir the circles and spirals of the universe. So Can these bogs were the power centers of society. There were meeting places and celebrating places and teaching places. Okay. So young girls would come and have, uh, get to learn the sacred knowledge. All oral knowledge, oral knowledge, they didn't write anything. And they learned practical things. For instance, baking breads and taking them out of the oven. But symbolically, this was also midwifery, the skill of midwifery. And they learned apple knowledge. And that was the knowledge of the womb and the procreation. So all the knowledge had a small practical side and a very big. And when they had completed their training, they were ready to meet a man for the first time. And it was always the woman who asked a man. A man could never propose to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and when somebody said, I want you if you want me, then he was so happy and he gave her so many presents. And you know this from all the, at least the Western stories of princesses who calls men to come and she chooses a man. And in the Icelandic sagas from 1100, there is still a record of the Norwegian king being chosen by a noble woman. So even a king cannot propose marriage to a woman. And we have so many songs in Sweden that we sing, for instance, at Midsummer and Dance about a woman looking after a good man and finally she finds him and chooses him. I'll just show you a couple of pictures that we have the three and the eight and some of the uh, symbols and the snakes and the oh, triskela. After five, six hundred common era, oh, wow. the patriarchy rose, and now the heroes are killing all the wise old women, the wise sacred uh, knowledge. They I'm persecuted the shamans, and the last shamans were killed, one thousand common era, when Scandinavia had become christened. But the old culture still. Uh, survived in folk literature, folk uh, uh, legends, place names, folk songs and tales, and all of this witness about an animistic and shamanistic mother culture before patriarchy, before Christianity and before Viking, really. And the relevance today, we think, is that these cultures are peaceful and uh, equal, and they are in harmony with natural rules. And in that way, there seems to be similarities between 
Scandinavia and Korea also.